When the man who was disabled put aside his hopelessness and despair and trusted in Jesus, he was healed. This is what we will study in this week's online Bible study. Hi, I'm Adam Burton. I'm the pastor at Central Baptist Church in Maysville, Kentucky. Every Thursday, I release a new Bible study that comes from the Gospel Project, where we go chronologically through the entire Bible to see how all of Scripture points to Jesus. Thank you for watching. Would you please give this video a like? Also, would you share it on your Facebook page? You know, if you're really brave, you can start a watch party. It would mean so much to me. Okay, are you ready? Let's study the Bible. In the fall of 2017, Marine Corps veteran Rob Jones, who had lost both of his legs to a landmine in Afghanistan, ran 31 marathons, that's 874.2 miles, over 31 days in 31 different cities on prosthetic running blades. He ran to, to try to change the narrative of wounded veterans struggling tr to transition to civilian life. He ran to raise money for veterans' charities. He ran to inspire others, and he accomplished these goals. In every city, people showed up to run behind him, following in his steps. You know, why do the achievements of, of those with disabilities often inspire others to follow in their steps? Well, people are challenged to consider that what they could accomplish without a disability. You know, people who want to, to honor the, the efforts of those who, who rise above their disabilities to accomplish extraordinary feats. People enjoy seeing an underdog achieve a victory. You know, modern medicine has helped many people overcome their disabilities to live normal lives. But imagine living in a time when there wasn't much hope for rising above the disability. You know, your hope might have rested on people willing to help you or maybe the thought of a miraculous healing. But with the loving God who created the universe, there is always reason for hope in life. In this session, we will look at the time when Jesus healed a man who had a prolonged disability and a profound sense of hopelessness and despair. Jesus demonstrated compassion and grace as he helped this man who had no one else to help him, and then he called him to faithful obedience. Jesus also revealed his identity as the Son of God through this encounter. Jesus, of their greatest ailment, all right, for all of those who have been healed by Jesus of their greatest ailment, the power of sin and death. The natural next step is to follow the commands of our Savior in faith and gratitude. Here's our first point. A hopeless condition leads to despair. Read with me John chapter 5 verses 2 through 7. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been there a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going, another steps down before me. You know, the scene in John chapter 5 opens up with a, a disheartening picture. People with diseases and disabilities lying within sight of a pool of water. Many believe that when the water of the pool was stirred up, it had healing properties, but only for the first person into the pool. Out of the many people waiting to, to the movement of the water, the, Jesus singled out one hopeless man. Now, this man hadn't walked for most, if not all, of his life. He was dependent upon people for the most basic of things, to take him places, to get food, to avoid danger. Eventually, he learned to get around without help, but always much slower than everyone else hurrying along. His only hope for healing in the pool was always taken away from him by someone faster than him. 
Truly, his situation was hopeless as he stared at the pool of Bethesda and never reaped any of its pur purported benefits. You know, we all know that feeling uh, uh, helpless in our condition when can lead to feeling hopeless in life. You know, we all have experienced this to one degree or another because sin has debilitated all of humankind. No longer do we have the, the union with God, human beings, and the created order that, that we had in Genesis 2. Sin has broken this world and God's image bearers. Moreover, we are helpless to fix the problem. We all know something is not as it should be, yet none of our solutions have helped us. Whether the various religions of the world, forms of human government, or means of mental escape, we are helpless to save ourselves. This disabled man couldn't help himself, but, but Jesus could. Likewise, the only hope that we have against sin and its consequences isn't religion or irreligion. It is a person, only Jesus. You know, what are some areas of, of life in which people may feel helpless? Well, relationships, health issues, hope for salvation and eternal life, temptation to sin, finances, home life. You know, Jesus asked the man if he wanted to be well, and the man's response revealed he was filled with despair. His only focus for healing was the pool, and he couldn't get into the pool in time. Day after day, week after week, he saw people beat him to it. On top of that, he had no one. He didn't have one friend or kind passerby willing to, to wait by his side to help him into the pool. Being hurt without hope and alone is a recipe for despair. But Jesus is the ultimate healer, right? Jesus is the solution to our hopelessness and despair. You know, have you ever felt the sting of loneliness? And does it seem like all the odds of life are stacked against you? Do you despair over ever of ever having victory over sin in your life? Well, if so, Jesus' question goes out to you. Do you want to get well? You likely won't find physical healing in, in a pool of stirring water, but you will find eternal life in the fountain of living water that Jesus provides. See, Jesus, His grace is sufficient for our struggles and failings, and His power is perfected in our weaknesses. Therefore, we don't need to despair, but we can boast in our weaknesses because they display Christ's power in us. Now, how do you see loneliness contribute to despair in the world? Well, human beings were made in God's image to be relational beings, so loneliness goes against our nature. People may overlook the need for relationships to accomplish other goals in life, which can lead to isolation and despair. People try to hide their sin and, and shortcomings from others rather than be known and supported by those who will love them unconditionally. Here's our second point. A miraculous healing leads to obedience. Read with me John chapter 5 verses 8 through 15. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. So, G so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, as there was a crowd in the place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. Jesus healed the man not by taking him down to the pool of supposed powers, but by commanding him to get up and to walk. Now, there is power in the word of the Son of God. And when Jesus speaks, diseased and disabled bodies obey. Immediately, the man obeyed Jesus' command. The man didn't get grace because he obeyed. Rather, he was given grace first and, and then was given the ability to obey in faith. Check out this quote. The divine word is so mighty powerful and strong in believers that, that the person, though not a godless person, 
has the ability to will and accomplish everything that the word, uh, word commands one to will and to do. For the gospel is ever the power of God for the salvation of all who believe. Yes, all things are now possible to the believer in him who gives strength, Christ Jesus. The man had not professed faith in, in Jesus or even asked for healing. He didn't even know who Jesus was. Nothing in this scenario indicates that this man of all the sick people lying there deserved to be healed. Yet this man experienced the grace of God in his healing. Jesus grants a gracious healing to us as well, healing us from sin and its consequences. He does this not because of anything we have done and certainly not because of anything we deserve. He saves us from sin because he is good, gracious, and loves us. The grace of God that comes through Jesus gives us the ability to obey his commands. Imagine if Jesus had told the disabled man, if you can find a way to, to stand up and to, to, to walk over to me, I'll heal you. That would have been so discouraging to the man because he would have been helpless to obey. The grace of God, however, gives us life and the ability to turn to God in faith and to obey him. Obedience to God's commands is the dependent upon the, the healing of our sin problem coming first. Our God-honoring obedience is possible only because of what Christ did in his death and resurrection. This is why Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. And as we walk in obedience to all Christ has called us to do, we get to display his transforming power to the world. You know what happens to our obedience when we start trying to earn the grace God has already given us in Jesus? Well, we start to become prideful about our works for God. We start to despair because we recognize that we can never measure up to God's perfect standard. Right? We begin to use our obedience as a standard for how we measure others. And we can become legalistic. We can give up on obedience and chase after sin instead. You know, Jesus later found the man who had been healed and told him no longer to walk in sin. Jesus cared about the man's whole being. Not only did the man need to be healed of his broken body, but he needed to be healed of his broken desires. The ultimate purpose of, of the grace Jesus showed the man in healing him was so he might walk in holiness. You know, we have been granted healing spiritually for the same ultimate purpose, that we might walk in holiness, no longer enslaved to sin, but living by faith in the Son of God who came to save us from sin. You know, why does God want us to walk in holiness? Well, it's because holiness reflects the freedom that Christ has secured for us through his death on the cross and subsequent resurrection. By faith in him, our identity has changed. We are now a new creation in Christ. Jesus calls those who have received his grace to, to sin no more because that is not who we are anymore. To walk in sin is counter to who we are in Christ. To be sure, I mean, we will still stumble, stumble in sin. And, and when we do, let us fall on his grace once more and stand up and walk once again in holiness. But continual, habitual sin without repentance gives evidence of a life that is still in bondage to the powers of darkness and hasn't yet received the grace of God by faith. Here's our last point. A hostile response leads to a bold claim. Read with me John chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered, Then my Father is working until now, and I am working. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own Father, making himself equal with God. I mean, imagine the man's joy in this every step as he walked for the first time in decades. But when he carried his mat into the presence of the Jews, all they saw was a man breaking a man-made Sabbath laws meant to, to keep people in compliance. After it was determined that Jesus healed the man and incited him to, to break their Sabbath laws, 
the Jews turned their fury onto Jesus. This incident sealed the Jews' negative opinion of Jesus, and their persecution of him would eventually lead to Jesus to the cross. You know, why do you think the Jews have such a hostile response to, to Jesus' miracle and his commands? Well, first, the Jew, Jesus told the man to carry his mat on the Sabbath. The Jews perceived this as a command to break the law God of God to rest from work on the Sabbath, just as God had rested from his cre work in creation on the seventh day. Now this, however, was not a violation of God's law given through Moses, but a violation of Jewish tradition that a person could not carry an object from one domain to another. Second, Jesus himself performed work on the Sabbath by healing the disabled man. You know, to suit the Jews' legalistic mindset, it seems Jesus should have waited just a few more hours before healing the disabled man. But instead, Jesus saw an opportunity to show compassion to a hopeless man, and, and he took it without hesitation, because this is what God does. Jesus couldn't violate the Sabbath because he is the fulfillment of the Sabbath laws of the Old Testament. In him is this true Sabbath rest promised in the scriptures. Yet the Jews couldn't see past their own man-made rule, so they persecuted the person they thought didn't measure up, but to who is actually God's righteousness personified. You know, what are some man-made rules that, that Christians should ignore? Well, one is you must affirm every unbiblical sexual ethic promoted by our culture. Or you must give according to a certain human standard, though it is not commanded in the Bible. Or you must keep your religion to yourself and not try to convert someone to your faith. You know, first, the Jews persecuted Jesus for his work, but they ramped up their efforts when they understood Jesus' claim as to, as to his person. He is equal with God. See, when Jesus called God my Father, he was implying, in part, the wonderful mystery of the Trinity. See, the Jews understood enough to know that Jesus' claim would have been blasphemous if he were not equal to God. So they wanted to kill him. But Jesus is indeed the Son of God. So they were rejecting the very one who made them and was sustaining them even as they rejected him. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In six days, he created the skies, the waters, the land, and everything in them. The celestial lights, birds and fish, plants and animals. And finally, on the sixth day, God created human beings in his image. Then on the seventh day, he rested from his creative work. But that didn't mean God stopped working in other ways. God continued to work in preserving his creation and providing for his creatures and in his providence for his image bearers. Therefore, God is still working, just as Jesus said. And the Son of God follows in the steps of his Father by working without ceasing for the good of all creation. Check out this essential doctrine. God is one in three persons. While the Bible affirms that God is one, it also affirms that God exists as Three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. Each person of the Trinity is fully divine. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Spirit is God, and each person is distinct from the others. This perfect unity within the three persons of, of the Trinity is a first-order doctrine. Departing from it is to abandon Orthodox Christianity. See, a disabled man helpless and, and despairing after 38 years of his condition, finally found healing, not just in the way he expected it. See, Jesus came along and, and showed him compassion and grace and healed him, first of his physical ailment and second of his spiritual one, sin. You know, some may experience a, a physical ailment, but we all share in the man's spiritual sickness. And our only hope for healing from the sin is Jesus Right? He came for our healing. He came as our remedy through his death and resurrection for us. He has taken away the sin of all of those who believe in him. And now we can obey him in faith and share the joy of our faith with others as they too may be transformed by the healing power of Jesus Christ through believing the gospel. You know, because 
Jesus has removed our sin and given us life. We live each day with hope and confidence as we follow him, showing others the transforming power of the gospel. Well, it's time for us to take what we have learned and to apply it to our lives. So choose at least one of these options, maybe more, that as a way to respond to the truth of God's word. First, how do you need to get up and walk in faith and obedience to Jesus Christ? Two, what are some ways your church can help bear one another's burden so you don't fall into hopelessness and despair? And last, with whom will you share the good news of Jesus hoping and praying for their transformation and healing from sin? Check out this quote. You know, we may not realize it, but the whole of humanity is exiled from the bliss of the intimate presence of God. But being dead in our trespasses, humanity does not realize this is what it longs for. Most people don't understand that to walk with God is to feel at home. Would you pray with me? Father, without your healing grace, we have no hope, for no one can come to you unless you first draw them. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to rescue us from sin and its effects through new life in him. Help us by the Holy Spirit to point others to the transforming power made available to them in the gospel. Amen. Well, thank you for watching this week's Bible study. Remember that when the man who was disabled put aside his hopelessness and despair and trusted in Jesus, he was healed. You know, the man at, at the pool of Bethesda had been disabled for many years and had lost all hope and given into despair. But when Jesus told him to pick up his mat and to walk, he was healed and he obeyed. You know, in a similar way, our sin has left us hopeless and in despair. But Jesus invites us to trust in him and follow him. And when we do, our sin is removed and, and we can follow Jesus in a life of obedience. Let me close with, with this. Jesus came to live the perfect, sinless life that you could not live. He died the sinner's death you deserve. He defeated both sin and death by rising from the dead. See, you can be saved from your sins by putting your faith and trust in Jesus. So are you ready to give your life to Him? If so, would you please connect with me? Call or text our prayer hotline. The number's 305-707-PRAY. That's 305-707-7729. Or you can go to cbcmaysville.church slash connect. There, fill out the short form. Because I want to put some free resources into your hands to help you to know what it looks like to follow Jesus. Well, Lord willing, I will see you next Thursday for our online Bible study through the Word. God bless.